In this step, we're going to take the cabin asset that we've imported and got all the materials on, and we're going to put it into our beautiful level. So, what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm just going to close the static mesh editor. We don't need that. There we go. And we're going to set about getting this into our level somewhere. So the first thing I want to do, though, is work out where I'm putting it. And I want to put it near my player start. So to find that, I'm just going to click on play. And this is where my player starts. And he starts looking in this direction. So that's all I needed to do. I'm going to press stop now. And that will leave my camera at this position in the level. So now I know that I can put my cabin directly in front of where the player starts. So then what I'll do is I'll navigate to the folder with the geometry in it. There's my cabin. You can see that the thumbnail's updated now to show that the materials are assigned. And we'll put that into the level by simply clicking and dragging. There it is, look at that beautifulness. Okay, and you can see that by default, it wants to stick to the ground. It's actually kind of hard work to get it up in the air like that. Um, but you can do it. So I would probably want it somewhere like that. So it's a little ways in front of the player when they start. But you can see there's a little bit of an issue with the ground not being level. So what we'll do is we'll level the ground off. And we're also going to rotate this around so you can kind of see the door. So first thing we'll do then is I'll hit E on my keyboard. You can see the pivot on this one's over in the bottom corner. So I might need to move this a little bit after I have rotated it. I might need to rotate it the other way as well. So I'm going to put it at a bit of an angle just so that it's not too perfect. Okay, and we'll bring it over there and let's just move it back a bit as well yeah that looks nice okay so to make this fit in the environment a little bit more what i'm going to do is flatten the ground down a little bit and then we're going to make it look a little bit dirtier around where it is like there's been footsteps we'll put a path kind of going from here into the mountain somewhere uh, and we'll do a bit more sculpting to make the path more believable and then we'll say that our hut our cabin belongs in this environment so job one, we're going to go back into the landscape tool. The landscape, yeah, it's the landscape tool, isn't it? And instead of sculpting this time, we want flatten. Oh, that's upset it. We need to compile some shaders. Okay, so here's our brush. So I want my brush to be a little bit smaller than this. So I'm going to use my square brackets to resize that. Let's just get a little bit closer. So, the way this works, if you can remember, is that wherever I start clicking, that'll be the height that everything else gets leveled to. So I'm going to click about here, this corner of the house, uh, and then I'm just going to do this all around here, and that should flatten that out nicely, which it does appear to be doing. And because I've got a smooth brush, it should make it nice and even around that as well, I hope. So that should now all be flat. So what I'll do now is go back to my place mode. And I just need to work on this a little bit. Make sure that it's not up in the air. Now I've flattened it, you can see it's hovering a little bit. And that's good because it allows me to show you a little trick. So if you've got um, a static mesh and you want it to perfectly align with the mesh below it, whether that's your landscape or another mesh, there's a keyboard shortcut for that. And it's the end key. So if you press that on your keyboard, so this might not be very noticeable on this, but if we press it, oh, it just went down. Did you see it? We can make it a bit more noticeable. Let's lift it right up. So I press the end key again. Oh, yes. So now we know that that's perfectly on the ground. Lovely. Okay, next job. We're going to do a little bit of landscape painting. And we're going to use our dirt layer. And we don't want the tool strength to be very high. So what I want is just kind of around this. I'm just going to be quite gentle with it. I want to make it look kind of a bit, a bit dirty. There we go. So I like that. That's nice. And then over in this direction somewhere, probably going to take it up to about there. I want to create a bit of a path. So I'm just going to zoom out so I can see where my path's going to be. I'm going to make the path a little bit smaller and I'm going to have a slightly harder brush to make it look a bit more deliberate. So let's just take the brush fall off down a bit to about 0.2, I think. I like that. Brush size needs to come down, I think. Yeah, something like that. And then I'm just going to take this path and I might just have to paint over a few times to achieve this. And the last thing I want as well is for this to be perfectly straight because that'll just look silly. 
So let's just take it off into the distance. Off we go. Because this this is like every day the guy that lives in this cabin's got to like go and fetch water and probably like kill a deer to eat it for his his tea or whatever. So it, you know he needs his path. It's it's the lifeblood of the whole cabin living thing. Okay, so now that at the moment looks a little bit too um, too deliberate. So I'll have some bits that I'll just try and kind of bring bits off of like that so it's not perfectly the same kind of width all the way along. But I don't want it to be as strong so I'm, I'm not doing too much with it. There we go. Oh, I like that. So that then is pretty much our path. That's where we want it to be. And there's one more thing that I like to do to paths that I think really makes it look like it fits in the level. And that's to use the sculpt tool to just push the ground down a little bit so it looks like it's been trodden down, which I think looks really nifty. So I'm going to change back to my sculpt tool for this. And I might need to zoom in a little bit on this. Like that, just so I can see what effect my have And I want this to be ever so subtle. So I need to be really careful with this. So we're not using flatten this time, we're using sculpt. And we need to make sure that we're sculpting down. So we're going to hold shift on the keyboard to make sure we're pushing down as we do this. So let's see how that looks. Okay, that's far too strong. Not good. So I'm going to set a tool strength of 0 0.1 on this, or maybe 0 0.05. Okay, so remembering to hold shift, because I'll let you in a little secret. This is the second time I'm doing this because I forgot to hold shift last time. So we're holding shift to make sure that we depress this. And off we go up to the path. Okay, let's just go over here. I am seriously lagging. This is not good. Up into the little mountains. Off we toddle. Okay, so let's just work our way back. Okay, and now we're going to play that to have a look at whether or not that looks okay. So that is depressing down. Yeah, so that's such a subtle effect, but it just makes the path look a little bit more like it belongs there because you've got those kind of natural dip in the ground. So I might go over that again and make it look a little bit stronger, but overall I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks nice. Okay, so we can quit out of there and we're gonna go back to place mode. Okay, so that will do it for that. We've got the cabin in now, we've got materials on it, we've dropped into the level and we've made it like it belongs there. So moving forward, we're gonna do static mesh again. Next, we're gonna import a rock. So we're gonna be repeating a lot of what we've just done, but it'll be a little bit quicker because there are fewer materials. So we'll get a few rocks placed around the scene. And after that, we'll also get a mesh in, a static mesh that we can kind of use as a fireplace, which will allow us to do some particle effects later. Um, and then we'll be ready to move on to the foliage tool to really fill this level out. So I'll see you in the next video to start mucking about with rocks. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.